self-determination. I wanted to um, give a shout out. First of all, I wanted to make this video and, um, and, and pay homage to Javante Tank Davis. This kid is moving up the ranks. He's from Baltimore. Shout out to Baltimore. I'm from Baltimore. Um, he's from Sandtown. That's West Baltimore. Um, that's, West ba that's West Baltimore. Sandtown is closer to the Pennsylvania North Avenue area in Baltimore. I'm from Cherry Hill, that's South Baltimore. Any, uh, any might be more peeps out there. Anybody know anything about Baltimore? You know about Cherry Hill. You know about Sandtown. You know what I'm saying? So big up to um, big up to Tank Davis, man. I love I love to see cats from my hometown do good. I like to see them make it. I like to see them, you know, get out of the hood. I like to see them get love from the city, especially when they're doing well. So you know, I want to pay homage. I want to pay homage to that kid because he's um one of very many people to come out of Baltimore and make and, and, and find success um, from acting to singing and all that all those different kinds of things entertainment industry period and um, while making this video um, to pay tribute to Tank Davis I guess you know I wanted to also you know um, highlight some of the other fighters that have come out of Maryland not all of them are from the city of Baltimore but um but they are from the state of Maryland, nonetheless. Uh, you know, I, I grew up loving boxing. I knew I went to uh, junior high school boxing. That was my first introduction into boxing. Um, kid named um, Kevin. I don't remember his last name, and I wouldn't put his whole government out there like that anyway. Um, I seen him. I seen him beat the brakes off this kid. I was uh, St. Catharines. Um, all, all my East Side people on uh, Rose Street. Um, the church on Royal Street. The school was in the back of the church. Um, it was a pretty small school, St. Catherine. I never remember that. East Baltimore. Um, uh, he beat the brakes off of this kid, Dante, who thought he could fight. I fell in love with boxing from that point forward, to be honest with you. you know, He um, trained with Mac Lewis, who I eventually began training with later on in life. Um, my first uh, my first training started in military school, and then after that, you know, I was on this. I was, after I got out of military school, um, I had suffered a lot of injuries, um, broken bones, and, you know, uh, GSW. I'm not gonna, you know, break that down for you. You, if you're clever, you can figure that one out. So, I had I wanted to go pro. I, I did want to be pro. I did want to be a professional boxer. I didn't know it at the time when I first started training, but I, I was pretty good at it. You know, it, it came natural to me, but I just had way too many injuries early in my career. So I'm glad to see, you know, other kids from Baltimore, other kids from Maryland actually be able to get on that world stage, make it to the Olympics, become champions. Something that, you know, living the street life never allowed me, the never afforded me the opportunity to do, you know. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. First is Henry Buchanan, um, a light heavyweight uh, professional fighter um, from, let's see, debuted in 2004. His last fight was in 2014, so I don't know if he actually, uh, if he's actually, if he's currently an active fighter, but being as though he, he hasn't fought since 2014, chances are probably not, at least not on any, um, any mainstream scale. And he has also fought Andre S.O.G. Ward. Let's see, George K.O. Cheney um, debuted in 1910, so this is the early 20th century. Man with a 101 and 21 record, 125 bouts all together, eight of his losses are by knockout. Um, lightweight Southpaw, um, his last two fights he lost. But yeah, so shout out to him, another um, Maryland fighter. Next we have Joe Gans. Who was a lightweight, um, a lightweight champion, and according to um, Marine Magazine, at one time considered one of the best fighters, of, one of the greatest fighters of all times, with um, 176 bouts, a 51% knockout ratio, and only 10 losses, and only five of them by stoppage. He was known as the the Baltimore Demon. I'm sorry, the Old Master. I'm thinking about another kid that's coming up later, the Old Master. So this, this kid was highly skilled, and he actually won his last fight. Let's see. 
and we'll go to Reggie Gross. Reggie Gross, heavyweight guy, um, debuted in 1982. He's fought the likes of Mike Tyson, um, Razor Rudder, Frank Bruno. Um, so this guy's been in there with some with some pretty big with some pretty good names. Um, it's his bigger fights he lost. He has a record of 19 to 18 with uh, five of those by stoppage. Shout out to uh, Frank Gross. Next we have Fernando Guerrero, um, kid from uh, Eastern Shore, Southbury, Maryland, who debuted in 2007. His last fight, at least according to Box Rec, was in uh, March of last year. Tony Harrison of uh, the TKO loss got stopped in the sixth round, it looks like. Um, but this kid has a 28-4 uh, record, all his losses are by stoppage, um, which is not necessarily a great thing to have happen have all your losses be by stoppage but the kid is so active he can turn it around so i have faith in him he's from my uh he's from maryland just like me so i'm gonna keep the faith next we have young peter jackson uh man has 136 bouts 78 wins 59 of by knockout 26 losses and only four by stoppage and 27 draws He's a welterweight fighter for Baltimore. Um, now, a lot of these, and he, this was the guy that was known as the Baltimore Demon. Now, a lot of these fighters, um, some of them weren't actually born in Baltimore. Um, you know, actually, and some of them, BoxRec, BoxRec and Wikipedia kind of, uh, they, they're kind of missing each other with the information, you know. So, some of these guys may not have been born in, born, uh, may not have stayed in Maryland, but a lot, but the majority of these, all these fighters were born in Maryland. Um, I think the one that I question is William Joppy for the most part, who's coming up next. Um, but anyway, big ups to uh, Peter, uh, young Peter Jackson, who actually got, who actually uh, took the name from a bare knuckle, bo a black bare knuckle boxing champion from the early 20th century. So shout out to both of those brothers. And here's William Joppy. It says he was born in um, uh, D.C. I think it's Lincoln Park, Maryland. Lincoln Park is very close to D.C. Because uh, in Maryland, the way it works, a lot, a lot of the counties that are very close to D.C., they pretty much just claim D.C., like PG County, Prince George's County, stuff like that. They claim D.C. because it's so close to D.C. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? Shout out to D.C., you know what I'm saying? Um, had a lot of homies from D.C. Like D.C. dudes, they're cool, funny. Um, but big up to William Joppy. Um, we all know that he's not an active fighter. Um, but he won, he won his last fight uh, to, to Corey Hummins by unanimous decision. He was a um, champion at one time. So shout out to William Jobby. 40, uh, 40 and 7 record, only three stoppages. 49 uh, total fights, a 61% knockout ratio. So the kid had some pop, some crack. Next is Nick Kistner. He's, um, he's actually uh, a relatively new fighter, debuted in 2010. Um, he has 23 fights so far, um, three losses, no stoppages, all by um, decision, uh, split decision or unanimous. Um, he has six knockouts, 26% uh, percent knockout ratio. So he's not, he doesn't have the biggest, he doesn't have the biggest punch. Cruiserweight, orthodox guy. He won his um, last three fights, it looks like, all by decision. So shout out to this kid. Who knows where he's gonna go in his career, but we'll see. Next we have Andrew Maynard. Um, who debuted in 1989. It, obviously, he's not a, uh, an active fighter currently. Um, he lost his last fight to Gary Wilcox um, from Lowell, Maryland. A light heavyweight fighter. So, let's see. I got his box right for a second. Not a whole lot of big names, but it's not even about how many names he has. It's about the fact that the man is from the same state that I'm from, and I'm just paying homage to all these kids. So, Big up to uh, Andrew Maynard with uh, 26 wins and 13 losses, a 40-fight 40, uh, 40 career. 21 of those wins are by knockout, so the kid has some crack. 53% knockout ratio. Out of his 13 losses, he's been stopped nine times. So shout out to Andrew Maynard. Next is Seth Mitchell. They don't have a picture of Seth Mitchell. Seth Mitchell was a heavyweight. Um, uh, he's from, um, let's say he was born in Virginia Beach, um, Virginia. And he resides in Brandywine, Maryland now. I thought he was born in Maryland, but in any event, let's see. Seth Mitchell kind of kind of came onto the took the uh, boxing world by storm. Um, Twenty six and two with nineteen knockouts. So the kid has some cracks. If you remember Seth Mitchell, 
to his both his losses are knockout losses. Um, his last fight in 2013 was with, with was, was with Chris Ariola. He fought Jonathan Banks twice. A guy of you guys may know Jonathan Banks. Um, he trained with the late great Emmanuel Stewart and is currently the trainer of um, Vladimir Klitschko. Um, uh, now, in my opinion, the, the, the two fights that he had with um, Seth Mitchell, um, the first fight, he clearly won that fight, but the second fight, I, I, I like Jonathan Banks. Um, I think he's a, a decent trainer. He just didn't look like he, he just didn't look like he really wanted to actually be in the ring, um, especially with that second fight. But in any event, he lost his last fight to Chris Ariola. Um, I remember the fight with Chaz Witherspoon. He he kind of blew through Chaz Witherspoon, as you can see. He knocked him out in the third round, um, or stopped him in the third round. And Chaz Witherspoon, I hadn't seen him since that fight actually. In fact, let me look at because he was thirty and two at the time. I remember Chaz Witherspoon. This kid was uh, like a banker or something. He um, quit his job as a banker to uh, actually fight. This kid actually still fighting. His last fight was in, um, so he, he's on the comeback trail. Let's see, he, he's, he's making a comeback. So he fought Seth Mitchell in 2012. He came back two years later and won his fight by TKO. Corey Phelps, he won that fight in 2015. He fought three times in 2015, that's what's up. Came back in 2016 for some dude named Michael Maroney or Maroney. 21 and 5. TKO. Second round TKO stoppage. And then his last fight was in uh, October against Carlos Sandoval. This kid didn't have the greatest record, but stopped him within four rounds of a 10 round fight. Um, now, it says he was born in Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, but again, I just wanted to check his uh, market. But Seth was actually still fighting, so that's what's up. Uh, I mean, um, not Seth, but Chad Witherspoon. I thought he was done. I haven't seen the kid since the Seth Mitchell um, fight. So that's what's up. 36 wins, 21, 28 by knockout, 3 losses, 2 by stopping to 72% knockout ratio. That's what's up, man. Um, I, I hope Chad Witherspoon can make it back to the top, um, you know, and um, improve his... Um, Improve his medal as a fighter, you know. I didn't even know he was still fighting. That's what's up for him. But Seth Mitchell, I, I think he's done. Um, and that's what's up. Some guys just don't want to take the abuse. I mean, the uh, boxing game is tough, man. It, it's tough. And heavyweights, these big two, three hundred pound dudes just pounding on your head, man. It, yeah, it, it's not a good look for future, um, for your future health. But anyway, shout out to um, Seth Mitchell. He stepped in the ring. Respect anybody who um, man enough to lace him up, man. Next we have Jack uh, Jack Pollock. Uh, as you can see, he only has five fights. You know, three fights, three KOs. He lost twice. Uh, this guy was actually like a gangster for real, man. He got involved in politics. He was involved in like um, jury tampering and stuff. This, this dude was a gangster. He he um was uh was doing like doing his business during the Prohibition era and stuff, hijacking trucks and all that kind of stuff. So this guy was um this guy was kind of notorious, and I guess he um started fighting as a way to make some extra money. I, I would assume, but as you can see, his, his boxing career didn't really last long. But he's still from Maryland, so shout out to Jack Pollock. Next we have Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Um, let's see, born in Maryland. Um, he born in Maryland and then moved to Jersey. Became known as the Camden Buzzer. Fifty three fights. 41 wins, 11 losses, only two by stoppages, stoppage with 25 knockouts. So he didn't have a lot of cracks, but you know, he can still hurt you. Let's see, last fight was 1998, Tommy La Rosa, which he lost a unanimous decision. So shout out to um Dwight Muhammad. And next we have Hussein Rahman. I know any of you guys, I know you guys know who Hussein Rotman is. I mean, come on, 50 wins, 9 losses, 6 by knockout, 41 kills, 66% knockout ratio. This kid has 60, um, 62 fights. Um, Hussein Rotman, he, um, uh, Hussein Rotman, I believe, is from, I, I, I don't remember exactly which, which, uh, let me see, what community was he from in Baltimore? Um, was he from the Park Heights area? I believe Hussein Rotman was from Park Heights, I believe. 
Um, I believe, I believe, uh, and he, I think he still lives in part in the Park Heights area. I think, or he frequents the area. Let's see. Um, P, uh, Alexander Povetkin. I mean, we all know, we all know Hasim Rotman, Vladimir Klitschko, James Tony. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, he uh, also fought. Um, what's the kid's name? Um, Lennox Lewis. I he did fight Lennox Lewis, right? I believe. Am I mistaken with that? Yeah, he did fight Lennox Lewis. Yeah. Twice actually, yeah, that's right. He won. He won the first fight, the the last one, um, because he got that that gigantic hematoma and they stopped the fight. Um, I believe that was the fight where he got that hematoma and he stopped it. But yeah, shout out to Hasim Rahman, man, and now his son Hasim Rahman Jr. Um, he had he actually hasn't debuted yet. He hasn't made his pro debut yet, so he's also fighting as a heavyweight. Just like his dad, so I'm 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 curious to see what this kid's gonna do, man. Shout out shout out to Hussein Rockman Jr., man. Shout out to all Baltimore fighters, man. Let's see, Red Berman, um, a throwback fighter, debuted in 1930, 77 wins, 22 losses, with only six stoppages, 33 knockouts. Um, shout out to Red Berman, another Baltimore fighter, man. Big up, Mike Reed. Current fighter debuted in 2013, super lightweight, Southpaw. Um, yeah, man, so 21 and 0 with 12 knockouts. He doesn't have a whole lot of power, 57%, but he has enough power to hurt you. Um, super lightweight, so I don't know, man. This kid might come up in a, may come up in a, a, a weight, and um, we may actually, hey, what if we can get him against J Javante Tank Davis? Or what if we can get get a fight with him and uh I don't know me let's see um yeah Javante Tank Davis um I think Lomachenko's moving up to 130 to fight Jason Sosa he's trying to get a fight with Mikey Garcia so I mean if this kid can keep it up you know what I'm saying he, maybe we can see him in some of these big fights maybe he can become a champion one day so he was born in um BC resides in Waldorf Maryland so shout out to BC again. What's up? So yeah, here's a kid. He has no losses. He's an up and coming box rate. Box rate got him at um, three and a half stars. So bright future ahead of this young man. Next we have Kevin Rivers, another um, current fighter. He uh, only has one loss out of 14 fights, 13 um, wins, 10 by knockout, 71% knockout ratio. Featherweight fighter. Um, so he's down around the area of uh, Guillermo Rigan Diaz. Um, with 13 fights, I wouldn't put him in the ring with um, Rigan Diaz. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But, kid from Maryland, um, Landover, I think that's close to the DC area as well. He won his last fight against Angel Espiro. I hope I'm saying that right. But, you know, he only had one loss on his record. He still has a lot, a long way to go. He can still build his career up. So, big up to um, Kevin Rivers Jr., man. I hope he um, can do some big things with his, uh, with his career one day. Gary Antoine Russell, the, the younger brother of um, Gary Russell Jr., um, they be Capitol Heights, Maryland. Um, he has not made his pro debut yet, but of course, it's much anticipated, obviously, being as though he's the younger brother of Gary Russell Jr., who was um, a champion at the featherweight division. Southpaw, his only loss is to uh, uh, Vasily Lomachenko, and I know he's chasing that rematch. 27 wins, one loss, 16 wins by knockout, 57% knockout ratio. He's fighting Oscar Eskandan. Uh, get that out of there. And let's see. June, June of this year, so that's what's up. Can't wait to see that fight, see how he does in that fight. Um, he had the Vasily Lomachenko one, yeah. 12 round um, majority decision, which Gary Russell Jr. just didn't let his hands go in that fight, man. I mean, he could have made he could have made that fight a much more competitive fight, but it's like he was just stymied by Vasily Lomachenko's action. But shout out to Gary Russell Jr. from Maryland, man. This kid is the goods. Um, I love to see him back on top. I love to see him avenge that loss. Get back in, or at least get back in the ring with him. But to me, it's a sign of a true warrior. He's not scared to jump back in there with the man. So hey, maybe he can get that rematch. Shout out to Gary Russell Jr. and his little brother, um, Bethavine, Scotland. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, 
super middleweight um, fighter. Let's see. Last fight, he lost to George Khalid Jones, which is actually tragic. That was not only his last fight, but he actually slipped into a coma and died after that fight, um, the 10 round fight. Max Kellerman actually called this fight and was calling for, it basically was saying that the ref should have stopped the fight. The fight should have been stopped long before the 10th round. You know, it, it should have been stopped long before that, but the referee, whoever it was, I can't even remember the kid's name, but let's see, Arthur McCanty. Um, let me look at this guy real quick. This guy right here. This 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 guy this guy has had some some pretty spotty um some pretty spotty uh uh uh, uh um um referee jobs man. He he's done some pretty shoddy work. Um, some fights he does pretty well, and uh, some fights he you know some fights these this dude just I don't know I don't know what to say about that man. But um but that kid died after that fight um. And actually, the kid, um, George Khalid Jones, after that fight, he actually he actually wanted to quit boxing. He felt so bad about what had happened in the ring um, that he didn't want to fight anymore. But um, but Scotland's wife, um, Denise, actually talked to him into fighting, saying, you know, her husband wouldn't want him to quit fighting. And he actually continued to fight. Um, and his last fight was in 2005 when he lost to Glenn Johnson uh, after he fought... Um, yeah, after he fought Scotland, he um he he took a uh, let's see, he took a pretty um long like a six month layoff. He came back for Eric Hart, um Eric Harding and lost that fight, but um he didn't lose too too many fights um in between the Glenn Johnson fight. He only lost um to Eric Harding and uh, Montel Griffin. He had one no contest, uh, another draw, and then he finally lost to Glenn Johnson. Uh, I think that was the championship fight, I believe. Um. But he ended his career after that fight. But um, I know it's a long time removed. But shout out to the Scotland family, peace, his wife and his kids. He had four kids. Um, yeah, you hate to hear that, man. You hate to hear. I hate to hear anything like that happening to a fighter, man. Anybody that um, that goes through that kind of tragedy in the ring, man. People need to understand boxing is a brutal sport. And when you clowns out here trolling these dudes and like the one kid that got beat up in the barbershop, man, these dudes. Man, you don't understand, man. It, anyway, I ain't even look. If you guys are dumb enough to think that boxing is just some skill you can acquire over a box of Lucky Charms and a couple of uh, and a couple of fights you watch on YouTube, then you're out of your minds. People die and lose their lives. That's why I have much respect for fighters. Any fighter, I love all combat sports. K1 tournaments, Muay Thai, Muay Baron tournaments. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. Um, yeah. UFC fights, um, MMA period. I, I, I love combat sports, man. It's very dangerous, though. It's very, very dangerous. So shout out to anybody who who mad enough to lace him up. Next we have Warren Thompson from Baltimore, debuted in 1985. Um, this guy's he's actually I think he's uh, actually been inducted into the um, Boxing Hall of Fame. I think in 2006, I believe. Even though he had an upside down boxing record, um, with five wins and ten losses. Been stopped only twice and had a seven percent knockout ratio. He only knocked out one dude, um, and not no real big name on his record. But he had an apparently he had an awesome um, amateur career though. Once won won a few um, amateur championships. I believe that's probably why he um, was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, the 1983 National AAU Super Heavyweight Champion. 2006 inductee, yeah, Maryland Bo into the Maryland Boxing Hall of Fame. Okay, the Maryland Boxing Hall of Fame. That's what's up. Good, it's Maryland. And last but not least, we have Javante Tank Davis. 17 wins, 16 knockouts, 95. 94% knockout ratio with only 17 fights. Super featherweight southpaw um, from Baltimore, Maryland, from Sandtown. I know Sandtown well. I've hung out with Sandtown. You know what I'm saying? I had a lot of homeboys from Sandtown. Sandtown is in West Baltimore. Um, off of North Avenue. Um, I used to, uh, I, that used to be my stomping grounds. The Pennsylvania Avenue, up, Upton, you know what I'm saying? The Penn North Subway Station, running where Edding Street is. Um, up there by, uh, 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 everyone's place bookstore. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm from Cherry Hill for all my Baltimore heads. Or anybody watching this from Beatmore, I'm from Cherry Hill. South Baltimore, um. So, 
I love to see, I love to see people from my hometown make it and make it big. You know, I love to see that this kid is a pro fighter. He's a champion. Slated to fight Liam Walsh um, this year. Now uh, let's see, January, February, April, May, May of this year actually. I'm um, just beat Jose Pedraza took his belt. So that's what's up. Um, apparently he's on a collision course with um, with uh, Vasily Lomachenko, even though he's a super featherweight. These people want to hurry up and throw him in the ring with Vasily Lomachenko, and I don't know why. They're not quick to want to throw Vasily Lomachenko in the ring with a Terrence Crawford, but they want to throw Tank Davis to the wolves. So. But we all know how that works. Anyway, shout out to Tank, man. The whole video, the whole video was pretty much for him because he was the reason behind the video, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I love I love to see kids from my hometown make it big, man. I love to see them, you know, come up out of the hood. You know, even though he um, you know, I think he still resides in Baltimore. He gets a lot of love from from the people in our hometown, and there's nothing wrong with that, man. So shout so shout out to uh, Devontae St. Davis. I hope he has an excellent career. I hope he um, wins his fight with this kid, Liam Walsh. I hope he goes on to do great things in um, in boxing and bring boxing back to be more, man. Seriously, bring boxing back to be more. Any of my um, Baltimore people, anybody who knows about Baltimore boxing, you know, we used to have the ballroom boxing in Baltimore. This is when I was um, training with Mac Lewis, um, who I believe was our Hussein Rockmont's first trainer. Rest in peace to Mac Lewis. Um, I used to go to the ballroom, the ballroom boxing uh, tournaments with them and stuff when I was training there. You know, let's bring boxing back to Maryland, man. Because bo bo boxing has has a has a rich Baltimore has a rich history of boxing, man. And it needs to be highlighted again, you know, because we're sandwiched in between Philly and DC, which we know are two boxing towns. You know what I'm saying? And I believe Tank Davis can put us back on the map. I seen Rockman did it for a short stint. You know, but I think Devontae Tank Davis can bring boxing back to Maryland, man. The kid has all the talent in the world, and I wish him nothing but the best. So shout out to you, Tank. You know, if you see this video, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Baltimore dude. I'm not in Baltimore currently. I'm, you know, on the, uh, on a, in, in another part of the country. And I am not at liberty to disclose my location to anyone. But, um, yeah, man, shout out to Devontae Tank Davis, man. Keep doing you. Keep winning. You know, moving up your weight. Chopping down those trees and taking those belts, man. Big ups, man. Peace.